all kinds of radio. And if you mess with the wrong types of radio, you get in a lot of trouble. So use your judgment. Some of it's federally protected and it's not a joke to play around with. So you're not allowed to do it unless you confirm otherwise. I'm not a lawyer. I think some of this stuff can land you behind bars if you get big fines too, five figure fines. So just don't be a jerk. I'm Daniel. I research security for fun in my own time. I'm a licensed radio operator and aspiring artist, as you can see. No? I think you probably could. I don't know. I think you can scale up, dude. No, that's pretty good, I think. Pretty dang. <laughs> don't worry if it's dang. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. Alright, I'm not going to go too technical into this, so I'm just going to touch as much as I can in the time I have. I'm not going to dive real deep into the inner workings of some of the protocols and antenna theory and, and the physics behind it. We go over some, some of the resources to get licensed if you're not an amateur radio operator. Uh, yeah, security with a lot of this is just a straight up dumpster fire. It's bad. Like a lot of it's just broadcast. Like, like for example, like pager data just goes right. Up, like you could just intercept it with twenty dollars worth of equipment. Just hospitals and alarm systems and like IT monitoring and alerting stuff. It's it's crazy. Uh, go over some of the entry level equipment to get some of the SDRs. You could get some some cheap actual hardware radios, and ho hopefully this will inspire some people to to take up some of this on their own. So yeah, what what uses radio? A lot of like almost every this there's, there's probably hundreds of radios in this building easily, like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Like input devices, mice, keyboards, some remote controls, the NFCs for like a YubiKey, RFIDs for key cards, and EMV for payment cards, phones, pagers, broadcast radio and TV. So, you know, go home and use your HD TV antenna and pick up channel 8, like, watch some news, watch some. Family Guy or something. Um, as, as an amateur radio operator, or you could do your own TV station even. Like you, you could broadcast on a, on a few channels, pick it up with normal TVs. Uh, baby monitors, like it, that's been in the, it's been an issue for a long time, but just recently got into the news, so, so we've been big dealing that. There's a lot of toys, like, Seems like almost every week they come out with some kids' toy that you know you could spy on kids and that bulges information and drones. A lot of people I know at this shop use drones and they're into that. It's two-way radios like walkie-talkies, uh, CB radios. Resorts like every hotel in town has their own two-way radio system. Taxi cabs, police department, fire department. Feds like FBI and DEA have their own frequencies they use, and you can just listen to them. And milk. Uh, not always. The ones here that like I don't even think it's encrypted. It's just a digital mode that doesn't get picked up on a normal analog scanner. I don't think it's actually encrypted. Sometimes they are. Yeah, flat, yeah, you can just tune in, listen to, to McCarran Airport and see what they're, like, listen to the towers and everything. The website, you can actually just run a job on a fucking website. Tell them what your coach wants. There's apps on the phone, too. Like, I know this works on Android. What's it called? 
So it's a standard, standard radio Android app. That's actually pretty cool to have, like you just have it running in the background. Like if a lot of people tune into a, a certain like jurisdictions police scanner, like usually something's going on. It's so, like I knew like like before the news was even reporting it that like there was a terror attack in San Bernardino because of that. Just getting the words like ten thousand people are listening to San Bernardino County. Like cool. Like listen to it and yes, people getting killed in an office building. At job sites, av aviation, like you mentioned, uh, garage and gate openers, like a lot of those you could you could like replay the you could record and replay the code and just open them. It's like you know what kind of garage door they have and you just sit there and wait. You could you could intercept it and as soon as they're gone, like open it. Satellites, so GPS systems. And the radio, the radium phones. Uh, as an amateur radio operator, you could actually launch your own satellite into space. You could talk to the, the space station. I'm sure there's other satellites too. Uh, radar uses it. A lot of cars, like newer cars especially, they have different radio devices. Like one that really comes to mind is the tire pressure sensors. Like it's been mandated that everybody, like all the new cars have to have these tire pressure sensors in them. And you could just, they, they have like a map address in them, so you could actually ID somebody's car and tell if they're in proximity. And yeah, in the United States, they're, they're required by law to have those now because of all those high profile cases a few years ago where the tires just blew up and you know, Firestone tires. Yeah. They're just going down the highway and they just they shred and people died, so they made that a law. And so, of course, all the, the car companies put the, the shittiest ones they could find and didn't really put much thought into it. Yes, kind of like a MAC address to your to your Wi-Fi card or whatever, they could just, you just tie it to you and know that it's your car. So why would you get licensed? Like, a lot of this, you don't have to have a license. Like, you're just doing, like, like scanning or Tinkering around with stuff you don't really don't need to have the license, but it helps. It helps a lot with learning. Like you know, I've learned a ton being licensed. It's like if you're like into computers at all, like it's the ultimate hacker hobby. There's there's hardware, software. Like a lot of the skills go translate directly back into IT careers. There's there's so much you could do with it. You just 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 uh. As nearly limitless research possibilities. But when you get licensed, uh, you're you're allowed by law to utilize a lot of labelings and, and bans. So some of that that's pretty terrible. <coughs> So, with this, some of, some of the stuff you're allowed to, to use. Like two meters, a lot of people, they use two meter radios in their cars for, for off-roading, two meter, 70 centimeter. And uh, they break it down on which frequencies you could use, what type of like, like modes to use for radio. Like, Right here, you're only allowed to use uh, CW, some Morse code. The rest of it, like you could use data or just analog audio. There's a lot of <coughs> like social social clubs and, and public service. There's a lot of clubs that meet up and. Like disaster strikes, they all set up their radios and establish communications. Like, like something like Hurricane Katrina happened, they'd be able to set up shop and, and call in help. And, and it's, it, a, it's a 
is actually right like these, right? Like the there's a there's a lot of them. Yeah. There's Aries and there's Snars and yeah, they're like tied. It's just like amateur radio operator like numbers that are actually registered with emails. Yes. Which, yeah. Which yes. Is, some some of them do register with the, some of them are like more localized. There's ones that's for northern Nevada or northern California. There's, there's, you get access to a lot of different networks and, and systems that you wouldn't otherwise, like like Echo Link. So with that, like you could, you could just use an app on your phone and like talk to people anywhere in the world as long as they have Echo Link as well. You can also like use a radio to hit a repeater that's linked to the internet in Echo Link and talk to people anywhere in the world with it. Same with, with GMR, digital mode radio. Uh, when this, this, you could send text messages to people with your radio as well. They, they look a lot like old Nokia phones. For, it's wind links, you could send emails over over radio. IRLP, it's another link one. There's, there's just physical repeaters that are linked together. So there, there's one in town that you could talk to people in Maui, Hawaii with, just over the radio. You, know, you get a lot of hands-on experience doing radio projects, and it's it's legal, and no one, like as long as you stay within your, your power limits and everything, no one will really mess with you. It's uh it's also a great excuse if you get pulled over with like a lot of electronics. Like I've had that happen. Like I've been pulled over in cops, and cops like, why do you have four laptops and, and all this stuff? Like who do you rob? Like, that's yeah, it's not illegal, but they still harass you. Look, I do this for public service or whatever. Get off my case. Yeah, it's also good if you rob people. <laughs> if you, know, like, you are a criminal. Yeah, yeah you can <laughs> rob people and you're like, this is, my, this is my radio gear. So if you want to get licensed, you could go to the ARL, ARRL's site. It's a nonprofit organization that caters to amateur radio operators in the United States. Just put in your zip code and list all the testing session, sessions in your area. Uh, usually it's 15 bucks, so you show up in $15 and it's, it's like a Scantron test. And uh, they, they pass you right there on the spot or fail you. Um, How many DEF CONs? Yeah, they also do it at de a lot of, at a a lot lot of, of cons. It's a little bit different at DEF CON, like it's it's more it'll probably be more along you guys as people. Like the ones in town, like it's it's usually a bunch of like really old men and, and like prepper types of people. Are you the ones running it at DEF CON? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, 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 was, it was a deal group in town here based out of Ellis. Yeah, I think I think like all three guys that tested me were like in their nineties. Like no joke. Cool. Really, really old. And like I, I was the young, I'm in my 30s, and I was the youngest person there. They were, uh, yeah, it was, they, were, they were super. I took out my last year. They were super excited. Yeah, I'm, because, I'm perfectly young. I'm an old part. Yeah, so, they're, 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 they're older than you, man. They're, they're, they're like, they're like, oh yes, young blood. And I'm like, I'm 30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like George Burns <laughs> running it. <laughs> Usually after you pass. Uh, so you, far. You have to go to this, this link down at the bottom, this FCC link, and as soon as your name appears in that database, like you're good to go. Took took them about a week to get like to submit it and for the FCC to process and everything. Other clubs are faster and, and oh, these guys are so old it took them that long to get to the office. Yeah. They just they yeah, just inch their way out. It took them three weeks after that. Yeah, it could it's anywhere from like two or three days to two or three weeks. Yeah, you just, just, just check that, that link on the bottom and eventually you'll be good to go. Well, this, that turns a lot of people off because it puts them in a database with their address that's publicly accessible to. So, uh, they have, um, you have a separate system now. They have a proxy system, so that's your address. You register with the FCC and they give you a proxy ID. And it puts your name and your proxy ID in the database, not the system. So I've never heard anything about that. So the FCC has that. That's what they made me do uh, when I took it at DEF CON. Because the, the guy was, was like, "Nah, you're you're in there, man, with your address." Is it? Because like when yeah. I looked, it didn't show my address. 
Yeah, I looked you up. <laughs> what? You can buy your house and check it out. Yeah. 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 It's there. You, you can use a yeah. you can use a PO box if you're concerned about privacy, but you it's not hard to find my address online. It's registered not only your name, but they keep yeah, a history. My real name, which is my real name. So, <laughs> so yeah, you can use a PO box, but yeah. if, if you're really concerned about your privacy, get your PO box first because they do keep the history. And you can just look back at your previous addresses. Yeah, so yeah, please, please get licensed if you're into into this at all, because I'd, I'd like to talk to more people about stuff besides their grocery trips and, and their proctologist appointments. So that's literally what goes on on a lot of the local repeaters. Like it, it's not cool. Yeah, they yeah, talking about going to court site and the podiatrist and stuff. It, it's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm on board. You're, you're selling this. <laughs> yeah. You're selling it. There's some really cool packet stuff. Yeah, there, there is. Really, really awesome. And if, if you get the, the general license, the one after the initial technicians, it opens up a HF so you could talk to people anywhere in the world, basically, with pretty modest equipment. People. There's a lot of younger people get into that too, but like versus, but yeah, there are a lot of old people on there as well. I don't know. <laughs> Google Translate might. No, there you go. It's a good way to practice for them. Yeah, it's a great way. Like I, I could easily hit Mexico from my house. Talk to Spanish. Talk to Spanish speaking. It's really. Worth of stuff. You could do it for for free, but like with your phone and, and that echo link like thing. Lake Spain in Mexico City. What's that? Can you pick up like Lake Spain in Mexico City? Uh, no. That would make some decent sense. You, you probably could with that app though. Listen to some T T J police. I don't know enough Spanish to really have a good time with that though. <laughs> And uh, yeah, like if, if people don't start doing this, like all, all these older people are going to die out and the, the bands are, they could do a lot of commercial stuff with the bands and every couple of years the FCC, they, they evaluate what's going on in amateur radio and if nobody's using this stuff, they, they take away privileges. So if you're, in, if you're into actual like security and, and hacking, like a lot of the software is terrible. Are you? The game like they use now called Hand Test Prep, which is awesome. It's just flashcards with the actual questions on the exam. Yeah, the, the ARL, ARRL makes an app that has the actual yeah. test questions and tells you where you need to focus on. And yeah. works offline too, so if you're on a, a plane or whatever, it's a great way to pass the time. Yeah, I just used it. Like, I signed up for the test at that time on Saturday, and Saturday morning I grabbed the app and just went through it all day, and then I went and passed. I brain dumped it like it was a comp Kia test. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, scanning is probably the, the easiest thing you could do. Like, don't transmit. And it's not. It's not a crime. So some of it is a crime to pick up and, and use, but for, <laughs> it's not really a crime. Yeah, some of it's illegal to intercept. A lot of interesting traffic. You get a scanner for under a hundred bucks. You can just use an SDR. I didn't do it. I was, I I was here the whole time. Have you ever heard things that you felt maybe you shouldn't have? <laughs> or were surprised with it? Uh, with, with the pagers, yeah. Because there's people's act, they're, they're like paging home and like, honey, oh. pick up the milk. And like <laughs> hospitals, uh, oh. IT uh, help desk, they'll put people on pager duty. And they'll get alerts. Back in the older days, they use them a lot. They still do, depending on what where you're at. Yeah, uh, they can't transmit, so there are a lot of safety factors that they don't receive. 
Um, and also, um, people have cameras uh, that sit around. You can't take your phone stuff with you. Yeah. Not so much, but uh, the yeah, pages are around. Pages. Like certain brands, because they only have the TV shows. And because of that, like what you just said about the, the cell phones, you used to be able to just pick them up for a long time in the United States. They, when they would sell scanners, uh, they would just skip that band. It's like it would go from like 10 megahertz to, to 850 or whatever it was and skip all the cell phone stuff. It wasn't that hard to skip. Depending on the radio. Or just the crystals. As, yeah, it de right? depended on the depended on the radio. Some of them you couldn't. Some of them were very easy. You could just buy a European one, and then it just worked. Or buy an old one, and it just worked. I like the Uniden scanners a lot and ProScan software. It's it's fifty dollars for two computer where you could remotely control it and and uh, like stream it. It's pretty cool. So you just set up a VPN to your house and, and listen to stuff there, or work, or whatever. Yeah, are you guys to the robot this afterwards? Like yeah, I'll, if anybody wants them, I'll, I'll give them to them. I'll put them up somewhere. Um, yeah, you can also just use a SDR and GQRX software. It runs on a Pi. It runs on... It runs on <laughs> yeah, it run, runs on Linux or Mac really easily. Never tried it on Windows. You use SDR Sharp on Windows. Um, yeah, they have a lot of Python and, and other languages, but most, mostly Python to control the Uniden scanners. So you could like, script your own stuff. Uh, and also radioreference.com. Somebody mentioned earlier a place you could go to just look up frequencies. This is one of the main ones. Yeah, just Nevada. Yeah, it's got lists for Clark County or, or Las Vegas and stuff for Boulder City, hospitals, casinos, the racetracks, Laughlin, McCarran Airport. It's for McCarran. Yeah, here's uh, can't see that. Can you read that? Yeah. That looks like something you can listen to. Oh. Yeah, control towers, <laughs> final approach, yeah. runways, yeah. helicopter control, <coughs> ramps, more towers. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is just this is just for there's probably more than this there like but you have the general ballpark ranges of what they're using and you can just use your scanner to do a range and see if you find anything else yeah lower down it said airline operations and here's the individual airlines so yeah Deltas and Alaskan, Allegiant, JetBlue, more ground. Yeah, some some of this is out of date and some some newer. Stuff. Could I figure out when like Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. <laughs> depends, on what, <laughs> depends on if you have the frequency and they mention it on the air. Hertz, yeah, all that actually using the Hertz rental cars. So yeah, it's, there are more sites than that to use. So that, that's just an example. Uh, yeah, you can scan remotely, like a, with that software I mentioned earlier. You could use it like in a, a pen testing situation. It's kind of cool if they have cordless phones or, or other headsets. You could, you, could, you could put a little Dropbox there and then listen to them remotely. It's 
pretty cheap. Cost, cost about 100 bucks with a Pi, GTR, X, SDR, and, and some kind of network adapter. How much data is that? Yeah, it depends, it depends on, like, you, you, could, uh, you could just not even use their network. You're not on their network. Oh, you so can you just radio. You have your Wi-Fi connect to your hotspot or use a 3G card or yeah. like, use your own, use radio to do it. Like, there, there's a lot of... It depends on the encoder that you're, if you're converting the audio to and then turning it up. So you can have your code set for the analog system and all this architecture. A lot of the SDRs don't transmit, but hack RFs do. And they cost significantly more than, than just a cheap $20 SDR, but you, you can transmit with them. In 7, on the Raspberry Pi version 2, when you use these radio transmitters, the harmonic has a frequency that the CPU is, but is in, uh, I think it's between 93 and 108 megahertz, and it puts out 500 megahertz. So you can, so, you, it's huge. You, and you so it basically out. does FM radio. It does yes. FM yeah, radio, exactly. and it's really powerful. I mean, 500 milliwatts is, is pretty available right now. And so, yeah, you just put a little pin tie on pin 7, and you can modulate it with a, a pipe up there. And the next thing you know, you're going to pull stereo. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's cool if that's the frequencies you need. But it's you only version 2, right? It's not, it's not the first one and it's not the new versions. <laughs> I don't know if you have a, a Wi-Fi pineapple, there's there's hack RF modules for that too to control them remotely as well. I, I haven't messed with that yet though. So like, yeah, there's just example, like it's pretty small. There's, here's that actual battery pack. So. You just stack those up and hide them somewhere in a building pretty easily, and, and that'll that'll run for about a week, as long as you're not just constantly transmitting on it. You could use that too. It's, it's, it's better in a lot of ways, but like, yeah, you could you could hide that in a building, and like if you're if you're a pen tester. What's that? Yeah. Just hide it somewhere. Put it, in a, put it up in a ceiling tile. Yeah, with, with the, there's that alpha wireless card. That will go back to like my access point and I could control it. And then the hack RF transmits and receives with that same antenna. You can change out the like depending on what you're doing, you can pick more suitable antennas as well. Yeah, you, could, you could script it, or you, like you could have use the Wi-Fi card so it connects back to an access point or. Yeah, there's there's a lot of kind of cool stuff you could do to a site with it. Like if they have cordless phones and, and headsets, that's a really funny one. Or wireless speakers, you, you could listen in on on their Skype calls and, and phone traffic and stuff. Uh, again, the tire pressure monitors. If you set that up, you could see when people arrive and leave. You could take an inventory of who's there. Like you have to script something up for that though. Just, just get creative. You could do a lot of kind of wild stuff. So yeah, just do a walkthrough first, see what they have, and then see if there's anything you could do to it. Um, replay attacks again. Just like this. I don't think we have enough time to go go through this, but this guy. This this video shows him doing a replay attack to one of his friends' front, like a wireless front doorbell. So like he just. He said something similar to that equipment in the last slide, and but it would ring the guy's doorbell. So you just like he's doing it over like SMS though. He'd like text message the thing, and that would be at home, and it would ring the guy's doorbell. She's like ding dong ditching him from like from home. And. <laughs> 
A lot of the, the fast food drive throughs they, they use radios for, for the intercom to order. And oh. <laughs> you can figure those out and just 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 listen to them. A lot of times they, they keep their headsets keyed up too. You can hear them talking shit when people drive away. <laughs> Yeah, there's <laughs> you can also uh, exfiltrate data out of band with radio, so like it's not going over the network, so it won't trip their their IDS. Um, you need sound cards for this. Like you just use uh, it's buried in that that bucket, but. Just a little cheap five dollar USB sound card works. Here's here's a demo video of guys getting it set up. He's setting up his receiver now. So I just sent Alexander, are you ready, over radio to his other machine. Are you sending? It's exactly what it is. I'm just going to dial that thing in favor of 2,000 points for it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, that, you can set that up both ways too, so you have, you, you can control your set, like if, if you know that the site actually watches the like Wi-Fi traffic and stuff, you could use that to communicate with your your box on on the inside. And it's really slow though, so like you couldn't couldn't like dump their database with it. You do this over the amateur bands. You can't use SS. You could you can use SSH, but it's illegal because you're not supposed to use encrypted traffic. So yeah, like you could use it for for casing the places out. If you're pen testing them too, like those FCC databases, like uh, if it's any of this, the stuff in restricted bands, they're required to register with FCC, and you can see what they have before before you even start. Check that repeater book and uh, radio reference. And a lot, a lot of the, the radio devices have. IDs, they're kind of like MAC addresses, they're not MAC addresses, but it's the same concept. Uh, so you could, you could see when people come and go from buildings remotely. Uh, ADSB for airplanes, uh, you, you could set up an ADSB receiver and, and watch planes take off and, and land and see where they're at. And, uh, if you sign up for the service, you could have email alerts to see if any tail numbers take off or land. Like if there's any activity on tail numbers, it'll it'll alert you. Yeah, there's full sites that you have to do jump ropes. What, what's that? Um, there's full site or there's websites out there that do nothing but uh, have uh, sensors that follow the aircraft on. Yeah, flight radar is one of them. So flight flight radar twenty four. Yeah, it's, it's pretty to watch. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like with your phone, you, you have that app. You can like point it right at a plane. It tells you all kinds of stuff about it, like where it's going and its flight number and yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. They can opt in or out of, of using that, that system. So. But almost all of the commercial ones do. A lot of the government ones do. Like, uh, what's that Area 51 plane called? Like, like Julia or something? Yeah. They, you know, <laughs> that shows up on there. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, 
Yeah, you can see it's flight every morning coming in and out. Uh, there's a lot of ham operators that work in IT too. It's so like, why? IT guys aren't guys. A lot of them still have it though. But, and, and you can do that FCC lookup and see where their house is. And a lot, a lot of them post pictures of stuff that they probably shouldn't. Like there's some of the, the people that run the repeaters up on Black Mountain have like an Instagram account of like the locks and their desktops of the inside of the, the shacks and showing what software they're running and like pictures of other people's racks. Like, oh, here's CBS Broadcasting's rack. I'm sure they really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to get started with this, uh, SDRs are cheap. Uh, you want to get one with SMA connectors versus the MCX if, if possible. And that's, that's the difference. So the, the MCX is, is on the left. And it's just like a, a, a pressure fitting and they break versus a threaded connector. So the, th the threaded connectors are, are a lot better. If it gets jerked out, like I've, I've had them break a lot with the MCX. And again, most of them don't transmit. So a lot of people like have this, they get them and they're like, oh, this sucks because I can't transmit. There's, there's tons of information about SDRs online. Uh, new radio companion. <coughs> Pretty neat, for, especially working with digital modes, because it has a lot of the encoders and decoders for the, the traffic. It's kind of it's kind of painful to use unless you really know what you're doing and, and know Python. And there's, there's some more things to look up. Uh, that first talk's really interesting. Like it is, she's saying a lot of things about like how you're able to, to fingerprint people based on what devices they're carrying. Like she goes into great detail. Is that the talk where she went through the, uh, how they were hooking up to teddy bears? Uh, I think that was the talk. No. Yeah. I, I don't remember any teddy talk. bears in it. Is it really talking to the teddy bears? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she, was, uh, she did do, like, uh, she figured out how to kind of see what was on somebody's monitor with radio remotely. So she put up a checkerboard and like just a couple hours of, of coding and she was able to get like a checkerboard on her screen. It looked really crude and, and not right, but it was definitely like getting there. So it's kind of, that was kind of neat. Um, the software defined radio with HackRF, like it's on YouTube by Mike Osman. Uh, he created the HackRF and it's, it's like, a dozen radio, or it's a dozen lessons on how to use HackRFs and new radio companion. Do some of the programming with it. It's really high quality. Um, if you want to listen to shortwave, you, you could do that pretty cheaply with the Hammond up up converter. Listen to pirate radio stations. Like there's, that still happens like quite a bit. Uh, RTLSDR.com has a lot of news about SDRs and, and a lot of tools to explore things further. Mm -hmm. really good tutorial if you have no information at all, just starting from nothing, the Yeah, just Google it. There's, there's a lot of it. Like, there's tons and tons and tons of information about SDRs. And Pirate Radio, mentioned on the last one, it's still a thing. It happens on, on shortwave and FM most common. A lot of times the shortwave is in, in foreign languages, so it's kind of hard to tell. FM, you could do an FCC lookup for your area. Basically go, go through the dial, and if there's anything showing up that's, that's not registered, chances are it's a pirate station. Some of them do a really good job, and you wouldn't know. They're not on there cussing, and you, they actually play music. And <laughs> but a lot of the shortwave ones are... are Usually political fueled. Uh, a lot of times, late at night, you could get the FM ones. I have I've only found one in Las Vegas. But in Southern California, I, I, I find them almost every time I go there. You can set up your own pirate station pretty 
pretty cheaply. Like I'm not going to go into how to do that because you get in a lot of trouble. But it's, it's easy if you know a little bit of radio. Yeah, radio Caroline was pretty cool. It was a pirate radio station. Like started in the 60s, I believe. And they basically had a ship that they would take out into international waters and broadcast. So you couldn't do anything to them. Yeah, they were notorious. Yeah, the Radio Caroline's still a thing. So they, they, I think they eventually like went legit and got licensed and, and actually have a proper business now. But for a long time, it was a, a it was literally a pirate station out in the sea. So you say they caved into the man? Yeah, I think they did cave into the man. Yeah, that's where you heard all the really good British bands put in the famous. Yeah, they let them play on the ship and. There's a lot of material about Radio Caroline on the internet too. Let's see. That old show Pete and Pete from Nickelodeon. Little, little Pete had a pirate radio station. Oh, no. It's called W A R T. <laughs> no. There's another documentary, Hunting Pirate Radio, on YouTube. Uh, the first episode starts out and he gives a spoiler for it. He's like acting like he's hunting a pirate radio station, but it's actually his. <laughs> and he was, he, it was, he explained why he was doing it. And it, he was just, he was getting local music out and like giving kids an outlet to play. But he had like a really professional setup and it, it shows what happens when the FCC catches you. And <laughs> it's, it's, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good documentary. I, I recommend it. It's, it's all on YouTube. Fox hunting, it's a, another thing that they do in radio. It's uh, finding a transmitter, basically. Like they, they do it for sport in amateur radio. They, they have meetups like almost every weekend to go fox hunting. Let's have somebody hide a transmitter somewhere in town. The first person to find it wins. <laughs> it, it, it's yeah, they, it's pretty useful. Like if you're trying to find like a, a rogue radio site where somebody stole your stuff, like. Pretty good to have somebody who knows how to fox hunt. And that's, it's done with a directional antenna and a, spect a spectrum analyzer, so you see how strong the signal is and like where it is. You could triangulate and a uh, signal and find them. You could do it with with a laptop SDR and an antenna. So SDR software comes with a, a spectrum analyzer. It's pretty good usually. <coughs> Or you get a handheld RF Explorer and a VAS crosshair antenna for about four hundred and twenty dollars. Or you go all out and get one. They, they go up to like five or six thousand. Yeah. Get licensed. Uh, a lot of people start out with Baofeng radios. They're really cheap. They're just, just little cheap twenty-five dollar radios. They're not, they're not great, but they work. Uh, there's tons of, tons of material about them online. A lot of the old old ham, ham operators really hate them. I like like guess links to somebody just, just going off about how they're just the most awful thing ever. Yeah. And you can program them manually, but it kind of sucks. There's, there's like, like 50 menu items in it and comes by default, they're in Chinese, and you have to change it to English. And so I, I just use Chirp; it's free. And, uh, you can get one, get like spend the twenty dollars and get the like the legit cable for it, because the like the five six dollar ones just don't work on Macs and Windows like at all. They work fine on Linux. Some weird thing with the USB chips that they use on, on the cheap knockoffs. They look exactly the same too. It's just a, like a counterfeit, like some Oakleys. They can talk to my vendors and like do the the friends aren't kind of the music ones that talk to them and use the uh, it's like borderline with legal because they, they put out too much power to use on Well you can you can set them down to the correct power. No you can't. It's still too much with the lowest setting. Like who, who's gonna, not, nobody's gonna really, <laughs> getting, but it's it's technically it's illegal. So as uh, most people, you know, people that are using mobility radios, they, 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 they
because they need a family back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, ch chances are no one's going to enforce it, but it is, like, by definition illegal. So I, th I think the lowest setting you could put on those is one watt, and the, the highest for, like, the family radio is half a watt. Yeah, like, like they use them a lot on job sites, and road crews use them and stuff, and... I, yeah, I don't think they get li like the. I don't think they pay for the license. Just, just go to to Walmart and get one of those packs of five. <laughs> to pass them out to their people. Yeah, yeah. I was, I worked construction here for a long time, and like it's what they used. And and they they'd often give you a radio like this that's been programmed to only be on like a couple of the channels. You just bring in your own and talk to the different contractors and mess with them, prank them. They have repeaters, uh, those radio towers, like a lot of them have like amateur repeaters on them, like up in the mountains, like Black Mountain, there's, there's a few of them. There's, they extend the range of your radio, so like you could have one of these handhelds and talk to people like all over the valley. As long as you could hit the, the tower from where you're at with, with your Low powered radio, it like broadcasts it out to the to the whole valley. It's one of the first things you probably do getting into ham. And a lot of them protect them with, with PL tones. So you can't just, just punch in it. you have to have like a, a code to get into it, but but they publish it online. So you have to know where you're doing. Yeah. A lot of them are linked, like we talked about that earlier, like, like there's a system here, the, the Western Reflector, and it, it's here and links to ones in, in California, I think Utah, and it goes all the way out to Hawaii, so you can talk to people in Hawaii on it. Is it radio or by, by radio. And uh, in a pinch, you could build your own with, with two, you could build your own like crude repeater with, with two of these radios, just link them. Uh, that'd be good to have, like in a disaster situation, to talk to people on the other side of the mountain. Like, just put you over, like, get around nasty obstacles. Okay. Ran out of time. See ya. Good stuff. Oh, I didn't. I'll, 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 I'll just guess.